Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Judge. Congratulations. Um, what, what, what was your DPhil thesis? Uh, thank you, Senator Kennedy, for the question. You're I, welcome. <laughs> I, uh, I wrote about uh, British Party leadership elections from 1963 to 1993. Did you, did you, uh, did, did you do it in three years, two years? How long did it take you? Senator, my, my then longtime girlfriend, who I'm proud to say is now my wife, uh, was in graduate school in New York, so I wrote it in two years and proposed to her the day I uh, finished at Oxford. Mm -hmm. did, you, did you live, you were at Maudlin? Yes, I was at Maudlin College. Yeah, did you live in the college or did you? My first year, no, I, I, uh, my first year I lived on, uh, on Longwall Street, yeah. 5 Longwall. Yeah. And uh, my second year, I lived in the Daubney building overlooking the Oxford Botanical Gardens. It was a beautiful place to write a thesis. Yeah, I bet. Um, explain, Judge, the, the Chevron Doctrine to me. Well, thank you, uh, Senator Kennedy. You're welcome. <laughs> The, uh, the Chevron Doctrine is a, is a doctrine uh, by which uh, federal courts uh, give a certain amount of deference uh, to an agency interpretation of a statute if, uh, if the uh, uh, interpretation of the agency is, um, is ambiguous, uh, federal courts will generally uh, defer to that interpretation. Are, are there any uh, exceptions to that deference? Um, Thank you, Senator. I believe that uh, binding case law does recognize some exceptions. Uh, whenever I have an issue related to any type of deference, I carefully study the law and apply it to the facts of the case before me. Okay. I, I want to get your thoughts on this concept of ambiguity, because you raised it uh, earlier when you were talking about your judicial philosophy. Um, and I'm really interested in your thoughts on this. Don't you think the concept of ambiguity is ambiguous? Uh, I mean, what does it mean? Uh, thank you, Senator. I think the binding case law talks of ambiguity in the sense of if uh, more than one reasonable conclusion could be reached on the question that is pending uh, before the body. Well, this is what I'm getting at, Judge. Does it have to be... 51% ambiguous or really ambiguous, like 80%? What if you look at it and you go, I think I know what they mean. So I guess I'd give it a 40% a ambiguous. How much should it, what, what, how do judges approach that? How do you approach it? Thank you. Uh, so I'm not all that great at math, uh, as you may have understood from the things that I've studied. Um, so I don't approach it with any mathematical precision, and I don't believe that the case law of the Supreme Court or the courts of appeals require me to approach it uh, with any type of mathematical certainty. Of course, as you know, um, I don't just uh, decide the issues I want to decide. Parties bring actual concrete disputes before me. They write briefs, they cite to cases, and they make certain arguments. And so I get very focused on the case law, the arguments the parties make, and apply all of that to the facts of the case before me. And through that process, make a determination in a particular case whether a statute is ambiguous. What, what, what kind of guidance has the United States Supreme Court uh, given our, our lower courts on the definition of ambiguous? Senators, I sit here, I'm not uh, sure. I can't think of any particular precedent as I sit here, but in the more than 2,000 opinions I've uh, written, uh, I'm sure that I've cited whatever the binding Supreme Court precedent is on that question, as well as the binding precedent of the Third Circuit. And if confirmed, I would continue to faithfully and diligently apply uh, binding precedent. Okay. I'm going, I've only got 15 seconds. I'm going to land this plane early. Thank you, Judge. Senator Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good morning and welcome to, to you all.
Congratulations. Um, Ms. Garrity, did you call uh, Governor Brian Kemp a pioneer of voter suppression? Senator Kennedy, I do not believe I have said that. Okay. You may want to check your records. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Mr. Ho. Um, did, did, did you say, I support compelled disclosure of political donations by wealthy individuals, but not by minorities? Uh, for Senator Kennedy, thank you for the gift of the notepads for my children. You I really are. appreciate it. I don't recall using those words before, Senator. I, I do remember. Okay. Oh, okay. I've got a bunch here. Um, you've described yourself as a, quote, wild-eyed sort of leftist. Do I have that right? Senator, I think I was referring to a caricature of the way that I think other people may have described me, not how I would describe myself. And I want to assure you that I understand that the role of a judge is to set aside whatever personal views right. that person may I, have. I heard your testimony. Um, have you called republicanism, well, strike that. Did you say, quote, republicanism is an anti-democratic virus? No, Senator, I don't believe I've used those words. Okay, you're under oath now. Y yes, Senator, I, I, I don't believe I've used those words. I, okay. I do remember saying last year that there was a loss of confidence in our elections that has spread kind of like a virus. Right, well, that's, um, a, that's a long way from uh, calling the Republican Party an anti-democratic virus. Yes, it's, it's very different, and I don't believe I used those words, right. Senator. Right. Uh, if you did use those words, w will you p pull down your, your nomination? Uh, S Senator, I, I don't believe I've used those words. But if you did, w will you withdraw? It, it, it's hard for me to imagine a scenario in which but I, I would I'm just use saying those assume words. it. If you said it, will you withdraw? If I were quoting someone else saying it to describe that kind of sentence, I, I, I wouldn't be expressing my own views, but... Senator, I, I don't believe I've ever used those words. I've okay. represented. Did, did you, um, did, did, when you made, you, you sent out those personal tweets about Senator Cotton, Senator Blackburn, and Senator Cornyn, did you mean them at the time? Um, without hearing those tweets, um, Senator Kennedy, it's hard for me to remember precisely, you know, what was said or what I was thinking at the time. I do very much regret the tone that I've taken on social media from time to time. I know that I've crossed the line from time to time, and I... When, when, when you crossed the line, did you mean it? Uh, without knowing the specific context or the specific tweet that you're referring to, Senator Kennedy, it's, it's kind of hard for me to say, but... But do you generally tweet things you don't mean? Um, Senator Kennedy, I would agree with you that Twitter has become a very coarse place. I, I, I don't want to debate Twitter. Um, do, do you generally tweet things that you don't mean? Well, Senator Kennedy, I've contributed to the coarseness on Twitter sometimes by pushing the envelope to right, break but through. When you did it, did you mean it? it? It's hard for me to respond to that kind of generally, Senator Kennedy, uh, without a specific example. You're a smart example. guy. I'm sure you can. You either meant it or you didn't. You got two choices, door A, door B. Well, Senator Kennedy, I, I know that I pushed the envelope. Okay. And do you regret it? I, I do regret it, Senator. Do you regret Kennedy. it because you didn't mean it, or do you regret it because it might cause you not to be confirmed? Senator Kennedy, I, I regret it because I think it's contributed to the coarseness of our discourse overall, and I, I think it would when, be when better. When did you have this, uh, this uh, epiphany that everybody has equal dignity and worth? When you were nominated or... Well, I believe you're... Including you're, Republicans. Well, well, I, I believe you're referring to my religious faith. Um, no, I'm not. Senator. I'm referring to your coarseness. Well, the equal dignity and worth is a 
principle of my religious faith, Senator. It's also a princi principle of, of, of morals and good judgment. I, I'm, I'm over. Mr. Ho, you're a smart man, I can tell. But I think you're an angry man. And I've, I, I really have great concerns about voting for you. We, we, don't, we don't need federal judges who are angry. We need federal judges who are fair and can see both points of view. And you said these things. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.